Before you charge your customer $150 an hour to design with this PIC microcontroller, I wanna give you critical tribal knowledge. There's a nasty little secret hiding in this chip, and if you use AI to write your firmware, it's probably not gonna catch it. At least it didn't when I tried it. You have to know this one. PIC 12F675 is a small 8-bit microcontroller suitable for industrial, medical, and military applications. It also happens to have eight pins in this tiny little package that was originally designed to compete with a 555 timer IC. So you take the 555 timer kind of form factor and then you give it a whole bunch of internal peripherals that's like having a whole bunch of extra circuitry you can program. Here's the problem right here, the comparator module. This module defaults to analog. So that's not gonna let you use all of your digital pins even when you set that AND cell register and your tri-state register to outputs. You have to make sure that the three least significant bits of the ComCon register are set to one. Then you get all your pins, all your GPIO. You're welcome. This is the stuff that lives rent-free in the mind of a firmware engineer. Before these comments immediately go to the ESP32, look, I love the ESP32. It's great for prototypes, it's great for learning, all that stuff. Yes, it's used in real-world applications. I'm not gonna deny that. But if your customer is paying you $150 an hour and you have an application that really is critical or you have to really understand what it's doing because you're releasing it to the mass market, you have to have a low bill of materials cost, you still might consider using an 8-bit PIC microcontroller. And the reason for that is the long, you know, 20, 30-year legacy, these products are usually guaranteed to not go end of life for at least another decade if they're still active parts. And then let's just say that your device is one-time use. Maybe it reaches a certain altitude and it does something. Maybe it reaches a proximity and it does something. Maybe it's more benign than that. Maybe it just lives on an assembly line its whole life, but it has to work. Like there can't be weird edge cases. So you have to know your data sheet. Now you don't have to know every single thing about the whole data sheet, but if you have a data sheet that's thousands of pages long and it relies on thousands of lines of unknown code from various libraries that aren't yours, do you really want to use that? Or do you want to use a company that has their own software that they sort of stand behind their IDE, like in this case, the MPLAB X IDE and their code stacks and all that. At least there's somebody who's backing this thing that's like a reputable company. So that's sort of my reasoning for using an 8-bit part at all. So it definitely has its place. It's not for everyone, but if you wanna build that resume or start your R&D business, I strongly suggest checking out 8-bit PIC microcontrollers. Thanks so much for watching, adios.